and it's costing more to hold attention from the casual way more way more and i think way more i i think like even in like the 90s and early 2000s i think like when like mtv for example like people would almost set aside an hour or two of their day to like discover new music or to kind of check in with whatever's popular that week do you think that music is kind of like aside from going to physically see an artist in person do you do you think that music is kind of becoming more passive for these casual listeners kind of going throughout their day like you're saying yes because they have more things to occupy their attention than than ever before and again that comes back to it being fractured right so it's if if you used to listen to music say 6 hours a day in the 90s and you look at that fan today they're probably listening to the music for 20 minutes and it may right. not even be straight through it might just be background noise that comes on when they sign off of twitch or right. they you know they log into youtube because they want to find out how to fix their toilet or cook right. a roast or whatever it is that they're doing yeah. and a video pops up and they watch it for two and a half minutes and then they go back to what they're doing so it it, it becomes less center stage and more background if anything. yes yeah and i think what i'm another thing that i'm realizing now as i'm like getting older is i've seen a couple of studies out there that suggest that like once people hit like 25 27 they kind of just like are less likely to go into discovering new music most yes and, it's very true like, like even i i, I work in I work with musicians every day and I still find myself like when it comes to, I just want to relax and listen to music. I go and listen to the folks that I know I like. Like I still listen to the same Johnny cash record in the same like Eminem right. playlist I have. Right. I, I think with that, do you think it is even possible to become even close to being a superstar? If you can't get teenagers in middle school, kids to like whatever it is you're doing no the age group is 13 to 26 and i feel like um in the age group if you don't land a fan it's sort of like what you just said about listening to eminem and johnny cash it's the soundtrack to your formative years right and that, yeah. if you can't capture those fans with you as the soundtrack it's very hard to get fans. It's possible. It's just hard to get fans that are 30, 32, 35, 40. Yeah. That's why you don't see a lot of artists starting in their thirties. It's a really good point. It's hard. It, I think it is hard. And I think some artists as they like, let's say like the artists who were in my formative years, like, you know, early 2000, 2010 up to 2014 ish. Like Lil Wayne was huge, you know, Jay-Z kind of had a resurgence of his career in a way. Um, in like even though Snoop Dogg, Wiz Khalifa became really famous in that time period. And like it seems as like as because now that's almost 10 years ago or more, and depending on which year you're looking at. But like right. how do you how would an artist that is quote unquote aging out of their music, like what are some things that like you've seen some artists do really su successfully to like kind of like like Snoop Dogg is an artist of course but he's also a personality he is also a host with Martha Stewart on a cooking show like some people in America only know him as being That's that guy the on the cooking show right so like so what are That's some things answer. like a good example of like okay music you are an artist but it doesn't need to be the only thing you're doing exactly you, like so like I don't know if you have a good example of maybe someone who's under the radar doing cool things that you might recommend other artists do if they're kind of aging out of their audience. Yes, and 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 whatever your hobby is or your passion other than music, and some artists that's all they want is music, but if you're a gamer, you should have a Twitch channel. If you're somebody that loves to cook and you're patient and you can explain mm -hmm. to people how to cook something, you should have a cooking show on YouTube. I have a client that loves to travel. And when I first met him, 
Um, he was in France and then he was in Jamaica and then he was uh, someplace else in the Caribbean all within three weeks. And I'm like, wow, Sweet. like this is kind of <laughs> cool. And as I got to know him and I looked at the pictures that he was posting on his Instagram, I'm like, damn, I wish he had a travel channel. And when I said that to him, he's like, I could do that. And I'm like, you could? And he's like, yeah, I travel once a month. I would, I would love to have like a monthly travel show to share with people of color where to go and what to do because it's different. Most of the travel shows are for people that look like you and I, you know, yeah. we don't take into consideration right. whether racism exists or not, or, you know, we don't, we don't really look at that. And he does like, he, he wants to go to areas where they won't look at him. Like, what are you doing here? Who are you? Why are you here? Yeah. So it, his, his, travel show and it hasn't started yet it'll be on youtube we're filming it now it just comes from a different angle and it's fascinating to me right well that's that's a great example i know uh, t pain has like started getting a lot of attention with his twitch channel and just kind of telling stories yeah um, i think a lot of stuff that i'll tell clients who are or artists who are just starting out and they're trying to say like well what kind of content like, do I make like other than here's my music video? And like right. an example I try to give artists is like, you know, the news is the news or like, say like when LeBron James does anything, like how many, the, he does one thing and then there's 87 people who all have their take on just something that happened. Yes. And like the news doesn't change, but the opinions can be different. So like, yes. you know, Snoop Dogg doesn't need to be an amazing chef, but like if I like his personality and he's doing something that I think is interesting, I'll tune in. Not because Snoop Dogg is the first person to ever have a cooking show or like there's a recipe I've never seen before. But it's, it's interesting. More so, well, exactly. Like it's I mean, I know I like Snoop Dogg, so I'm gonna tune in. Like if, right. if I think T Pain is interesting or I like some of his songs, You're I might tune, tune in to Twitch. Right. And you don't need to necessarily discover something brand new or right. reinvent the wheel like you can kind of just give a take or be present like how many uh, i'm sure there are a lot of rappers who can make money just playing Fortnite, like for their in, right. with their fans or with their audience and it's like you i think a lot of artists miss a part of the perspective where like your music helps you build an audience but your audience is what you monetize like, exactly. Unless you're getting like a sync placement or you land your music in a music video or, or a, like a Netflix show or something. Aside from that, like the music is what you use to build the audience and to get attention. And the yes. attention is what you monetize, whether exactly. it's with your song or I'm appearing exactly. on, right? I'm going to eat chicken wings with hot sauce on it. How many rap, like musicians have done that? And it's like, they're just visible. They're just doing something funny, something interesting. Right. And a lot of people, I think, miss that or they think too hard when uh, they think of I got to create content. They think they need to set up a bunch of lights and have a schedule, you know, rent a car and nope. all this. And instead of just like, why don't you just document what you do with your friends? And if you're going exactly. to the studio, document it. And there's a big difference between producing content and documenting what you're just doing already. Right. That's real, you know, and that comes back to even what we were talking about for folks that are aging out. It's really a numbers game. So if you're if if you know that for every 50 people that hear your music or whatever the number is, I'm making it up. Right. Yeah. One person becomes a fan. If you want 100 fans, just do the math. And as you get older, it may not not be one out of 50. It might be one out of 100 or one out of 200. But there is a formula for everybody, whether you're talented, whether you're not talented, old, young, whatever. There's a formula. You just need to figure out what your ratio is and then do the math. Yeah. Just if you're if you're not bringing in a lot of fans, you're going to have to reach more people right. to bring in well, more fans. It's that numbers game, like you said. It's if, a numbers game. Every 200 people that i am exposed to yes two of them catch on okay then it's yes. a numbers game i need to get in front of more people that fit that audience but if you have two different ways to get in front of them you have the music and then you have the cooking show or the travel show or twitch now it's it's your ratio becomes tighter 
So right. you're reaching you're reaching less people to reach more, if that makes any sense, to, yeah. to gain more into your franchise. Yeah. 